quality score, what it is, how it's calculated, and really taking a look at the ad auction in depth and really understanding ad rank and how your actual CPC, your actual cost per click, cost per click is calculated. Some of the things in this course, um, in these next couple of videos, we're gonna ha we have already covered in this course. Um, at the very least, it'll be a refresher. Um, some of this information will just help help you to solidify the knowledge that you already have. Uh, but it's also just very good to to repeat some of this um, and to get a more detailed sense of how this all works. So. Uh, let's dive right in and we'll get started by a brief overview of what quality score is, what it means to Google and what it looked like in what Google looked like in the pre quality score era. In order to first understand what quality score is and how it came to be, it's important to first understand what Google is at its most fundamental level. Essentially, Google is a massive referral service. People come to Google looking for referrals. When people need to find something on the internet, they ask Google where they could find it. They ask Google this question by typing a query into the Google search box, and Google provides them websites that hopefully contain the information Google's customer, you, was looking for. So it stands to reason, from a business perspective, that Google cares a great deal how relevant their suggestions or referrals are to their customers. The more closely a web page that Google refers you to provides the information you're looking for, the better experience you're going to have. The better experience you have when using Google's referral service, the more likely you'll be to come back again in the future and use Google to find information on the internet again. If Google sent you to a website that offered PowerPoint tips when you were searching for somewhere to buy power strips, you might not use Google as frequently in the future, and worse, you might even begin using another search engine like Bing or Yahoo. It especially stands to reason, then, that Google also cares a great deal about this same sort of relevancy when it comes to the ads they show their users. Ads that are shown above their organic search results. Ads that are the bread and butter of their business model, accounting for more than 97% of their total revenue. So AdWords quality score stripped of any technical jargon is Google's way of ensuring that their customers have the same high quality referral experience with a paid ad as they do with an organic result. Now that we understand what Quality Score aims to do at a conceptual level, let's take a closer look at how Quality Score actually works, how it's calculated, and what it's comprised of. One of the first numbers you need to be familiar with is something called ad rank. Your ad rank is just a number that determines what ad slot your ad will show in. The advertiser with the highest ad rank gets their ad in the very top ad slot on the search engine results page, or SERP. Your ad rank is calculated in a live auction every single time a search is performed on Google. The question is, how does Google calculate your ad rank? Great question. Let's take a closer look at how ad rank was calculated in the pre-quality score era. Quality score was introduced in 2005, and up until then, the AdWords auction was a really simple thing. The only thing that really mattered was your max cost per click, or CPC, for any given keyword. Or in other words, how much you told Google you were willing to pay for an ad click triggered by a specific query. Let's take a look at an example auction. Let's say Brad, Ben, and Brett all run online shops that specialize in custom tailored men's briefs. Each of them tell Google to show their ads when someone searches for bespoke men's briefs. That'll be our keyword. Brad sets his max CPC for that keyword at $3. Ben sets his max CPC at $2. And Brett's only willing to pay about $1.50 per click for that specific keyword. So back in the early days, Brad would win the top ad slot, or position 1, since he had the highest max bid. Ben would take the second spot, and Brett would take the third spot. Not to confuse matters that are no longer relevant, but click-through rate, or CTR, did in fact play a role in the ad rank calculation before quality score was introduced. Actual ad rank took into account a keyword's click-through rate, since a keyword with a very high bid but no clicks was not only obviously not relevant to users, but it also wasn't making Google any money, no matter how much an advertiser was willing to pay for that click. What's important to know now is that before Quality Score came along, the highest ad rank was essentially awarded to the highest bidder. But once Quality Score was introduced, everything changed, and things got a whole lot trickier. So as we saw in the previous example, calculating ad rank based solely on max CPC bid did very little in the way of ensuring a high quality user experience with paid ads. As long as your advertising pockets were deep enough, 
you could place first on the results page with highly irrelevant ads and shoddy websites you were sending clicks to. Google being a premier search engine and not the local penny saver, didn't want, for example, an insurance company running an extensive branding campaign and showing their ads to users on non-insurance related queries. While those ads may have been profitable for the advertiser in the long run, they disrupted the streamlined and highly controlled environment Google wanted to provide its own customers. So taking those considerations into account, Google introduced Quality Score in 2005. Before we talk about the Quality Score equation, there's a couple more worthwhile things to note. The first thing worth understanding is that every single keyword in your account has a Quality Score rated on a 10-point scale. Here's what your Quality Score columns look like in the actual AdWords account. Quality Score is hidden by default, but you can find it by clicking on Columns, Customize Columns, Attributes, and adding quality score. You could drag and rearrange your columns as you see fit. I'll move it up here in front of clicks. Hit apply to save these columns. And now you can see your quality score along with your keywords in the account. We'll come back and spend a lot more time in the actual accounts later, but here's just an idea of where your quality score shows up and what it looks like. You can see historical quality score data from within your AdWords account. In other words, you can only see what your quality score is now, not what it was yesterday or how it changed over time. There are some great third-party tools and AdWords scripts that you can run to collect this data, and we'll talk more about that later on. While Google themselves never confirmed that an internal account level quality score is, exists, it's generally accepted that your overall account has a quality score that in some way or other impacts your overall performance. In any case, the better your keyword level quality score is, the better your account level quality score is going to be. Display network quality score is another murky area, and it's known that improving your click-through rate on any non-search campaigns will improve the efficiency of your display campaigns as well. For our purposes here, we'll be focusing on the tangible quality score data that our account actually presents us, keyword level quality score, on the search network only. Let's dig a little deeper now and take a closer look at the individual components of quality score. There are four main factors that Google considers when calculating keyword level quality score on the search network. Click-through rate is the number one most important of them all. There are a number of important details to discuss here and we'll get back to them shortly. The second factor is the relevance between the keyword and the actual ad text. The third factor is the relevance between the keyword that triggered the ad impression and the actual query the user typed into the Google search box. And the fourth factor is what we'll call landing page relevance. Let's take a closer look at each of these factors individually. Click-through rate can be thought of as the people's court. And when thought of that way, it makes a lot of sense from a logical perspective why CTR is the most important factor in determining your quality score for any given keyword. While algorithms can do a great job at a lot of things, they still can assess human appeal as well as humans can. And essentially, a keyword's actual click-through rate tells us how appealing your keyword and ad combination is to actual people using Google Search. Just to clarify, your CTR is calculated by dividing the number of clicks a keyword has received by that keyword's number of impressions and then multiplying that by 100 to get the percentage. So for example, a keyword with 279 clicks and 10,546 impressions has a quality score of 2.6%. You take the 0 0.026, multiply that by 100, and you get 2.6. And that's your CTR. In other words, 2.6% of the people who see an ad triggered by that keyword actually clicked on it. It goes without saying that the higher the CTR, the higher your quality score will be. Now at this point, you may have a few questions. First, you might be wondering, what's a good CTR? Well, unfortunately, there's no real answer to that question. There are so many variables that go into every unique circumstance that it's impossible to know what type of CTR you should be aiming for and what type of CTR is normal for your industry and for your keywords. Oftentimes, you'll be running a broad match keyword and aiming for a lower spot in the page, in which case you'll probably get a lower CTR than if you were bidding more aggressively on a phrase or exact match keyword and targeting a higher position on the page. That leads us to your next two questions. A, how does Google know what a good CTR is? And B, how does Google calculate this part of my quality score for brand new keywords with no click-through rate data? Well, the answer is that Google pulls from its enormous database of historic data to get ballpark figures for what your CTRs should look like in your industry for your keywords and for your specific bids. 
You also know that ads in lower positions on the page typically get lower CTRs, and you may be wondering if Google penalizes your quality score for poorer click-through rates due to a lower position. The good news is that quality score is normalized by ad position, which means that Google understands that CTRs will inevitably vary based on position, and Google does assess your ad's position when determining the health of your click-through rate. It's also worth mentioning that Google tracks your display URL click-through rates for each ad in an ad group and incorporates that into your keyword level CTR portion of your quality score. Because of that, it's always a good idea to get in the habit of testing different display URLs within an ad group to see which ones yield the best CTRs. We've been talking a great deal about relevance, and the relevance between your keywords and ad copy is a really important thing. Google knows that in order for your ad to be relevant to the user, the text of your ad should talk about the themes your keywords represent. Often people make the mistake of stuffing their keywords into their ad copy numerous times, but that's really not what Google's looking for. Google wants to see ad text that is thematically related to the keywords in that ad group. For example, if your keywords are Canon printer repair, online computer help, and hard drive retrieval, for example, it's okay to have ad text that talks about online tech support even though it doesn't necessarily include all your actual keywords. To be safe though, it's always a good practice to try and include the main keywords in your headline or the first description line of the ad. When we talk about repair and quality score later, we'll go over ways to ensure ad text and keyword relevancy in greater detail. Remember, it's completely fine if different ad groups have completely different keywords and ads altogether. As long as the keywords and ads in each particular ad group are reflective of one another, there won't be any issues. The sentence, phrase, term, or question a user types into the Google search box is referred to as a query. So whereas your keywords trigger ad impressions, user queries trigger search results pages. Google calculates quality score for your keywords in real time, every single time a search is performed. Not to confuse things unnecessarily, but the quality score you see in your account is not necessarily the actual quality score awarded to your keywords in real time. One of the factors that goes into your real time quality score is the relevance between the user's query and your keyword that triggered your ad impression. Likewise, Google also takes into account the relevancy between the query and the ad copy that's going to be triggered by the keyword. The same reasoning applies to the keyword ad text relevance we discussed just before. Google understands that the more relevant a searcher's query is to an advertiser's keyword and ad text, the more relevant and useful the ads and overall user experience is likely going to be. Careful use of dynamic keyword insertion can help with ad copy query relevance, and appropriate use of keyword match types will help ensure your keywords always remain relevant to the user's actual query. And we'll talk more about that later. I'm certainly not recommending that you know, a traditional broad match doesn't have a place and time, but it's just something to keep in mind when optimizing for quality score. Landing page quality is the least weighted factors in calculating quality score, and most advertisers don't run into landing page issues. But the elements of landing page quality are definitely worth knowing and understanding. There are five primary categories of landing page relevance, or landing page quality, as it's often referred to. First and foremost, yep, you guessed it, we have landing page to keyword and ad relevance. Then we have something called landing page load time, which is really a really non-issue nowadays. Then there's spider ability, transparency, and navigability. Landing page relevance is very similar to the other types of relevance we've discussed. Google wants the user to continue to have a great experience after leaving Google. After all, a referral service is only as good as the places it refers its users to. Your ad should land users on a web page that relates to what the user was looking for. If the user was asking for an answer to a question or a solution to a problem, your landing page should provide that answer or solution. Just like with ad copy, your landing page need not contain all your actual keywords. As long as the content of your landing page is thematically related to the keywords in your ad group, you'll have nothing to worry about in this area. It's also important to include enough text on your landing page for Google to recognize as relevant. There isn't a set number of characters you need to satisfy Google's bots, but if there are more images than text on your landing page, that's a fair indication that you may run into some trouble. It goes without saying, try to include actual text instead of images of text whenever possible. If I had to throw a number out there, I'd say two to three paragraphs of relevant text should be a minimum amount to ideally aim for. Remember, 
Don't do anything dumb like repeating your keywords over and over again or make the color of your text the same as the background. Google's smarter than that and you'll get penalized. The content of your landing page should also be primarily unique to your website. If you're using manufacturer descriptions, etc., try to enhance them with your own additional content wherever possible.